Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? This week, I'm going to share an interview that I did with Canadian theater and film actor, Charlie Chiarelli. And Charlie, interestingly enough, is the main actor. He stars in a really, really delightful film called The Road to the Lemon Grove and you can catch that film anywhere online. And I will be sharing a recipe for a summer lemon torta from Sorrento, Italy. So we're all about lemons today. And that recipe is also from my new book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diary Seasons. I'll be sharing an excerpt from that book and the recipe for the summer lemon torta. So stay with me. So this excerpt is from my latest book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diaries Seasons. It's on page 34 and it's titled A Summer Lemon Torta from Sorrento, Italy. It's one of my diary entries from the month of July. Lemons have been used in many ways throughout history. During the European Renaissance, fashionable ladies used lemons to make their lips red and pronounced. In the early 1900s, an elixir of warm water, lemon juice, and sugar was thought to help digestion. Today, a mixture of olive oil and lemon juice is said to soothe rough, dry hands. For me, fresh, fragrant lemons signal summer. The yellow peel resembles a bright summer sun, and the fresh, hypnotizing perfume of the juice certainly make this a symbolic fruit. Sure, you can get lemons year-round, but not like the summer lemons here in Italy, especially in Sorrento. The simplest way to really brighten up any dish is by adding in lemon zest or lemon juice. For a light and refreshing summer dessert to be enjoyed alone or with some vanilla gelato, mix a pound of fresh strawberries whole and halved with a juice of one lemon and a tablespoon or so of sugar. Let that marinate for one hour and serve. The perfume of lemon torta wafting through my kitchen always reminds me of summer vacations at a small bed and breakfast called an agriturismi in Sorrento, Italy, where the air is infused with fresh lemons. The view of the Bay of Naples, the perfume of fresh lemons, and the vibrant colors all combine to make for a resplendent experience. And as promised, here is the recipe for the lemon torta. Now this serves six to eight people. The ingredients are two cups of flour sifted, one and a half cups of sugar, four fresh lemons, one half cup of unsalted butter, one cup of warm milk, four eggs, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of vanilla, six fresh lemon slices, one cup of candied fruit, six maraschino cherries. And before I give you directions, just as a side note, for those that need to eat gluten-free, you can substitute the two cups of regular flour for two cups of a gluten-free flour. Um, if you need to eat sugar-free or want something with less calories, you can substitute the one and a half cups of sugar for, you can use stevia, you can substitute stevia for the sugar. And let's see, if you need to eat dairy-free, if you want to eat something plant-based, there are plenty of plant-based butter substitutes out there and also milk substitutes. There are nut, lots of nut milks out there and also many different egg substitutes. So you can, you know, substitute if you'd like to and you don't have to use the maraschino cherries or the candied fruit. You can just use a fresh fruit, maybe some fresh strawberries. So the directions are you're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Melt the butter in a saucepan and set it aside to let it cool. Be sure that you don't burn the butter. So as soon as the butter melts, set it aside to let it cool. Juice the four lemons into a small bowl and set that aside. Grate the peels of the four lemons, set that aside. 
Cut the candied fruit into small cubes and set that aside. Separate the eggs into two bowls. With a hand mixer, whip the egg yolks with the sugar until blended and creamy. Add in the lemon peel and lemon juice a little at a time to the egg yolk mixture while blending in. Then you're going to add in the sifted flour one quarter cup at a time, blending in after each addition. Add warm milk and melted butter a little at a time. Beat the egg whites in the separate bowl until the peaks have formed. Fold the egg whites gently into the egg yolk mixture. Add in baking powder, candied fruits, and vanilla. Butter and flour a pan, or you can cover it with parchment paper. Bake in the oven for 40 minutes. Remove the cake from the oven and let it cool. Place on a serving dish, decorate with lemon slices, that's fresh lemon slices, and maraschino cherries, and serve. Hey, this is Maria Liberati, and I just want to mention that I am doing my podcast today. I'm so fortunate I'm doing it at this award-winning design studio. It's a showroom kitchen um, designed by Gaiman Studios. They're in uh, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. So we're right outside of Philadelphia, and it's the most beautiful kitchen. I know you can't see everything, but they have won so many awards for their design. So I've got I've gotten the I'm fortunate enough to be able to film this episode here and I am also lucky to have with me Charlie Chiarelli or how do we say it in the American way Charlie Chiarelli sure. let's do it the whole the whole way I was yes. born Calogero Chiarelli my first real name is Calogero which yes. is the name of the character in the movie as it were uh-huh. and and of course that evolved when when the nuns who taught me grade one couldn't say Cal- Calogero all they could say is Caligula they changed my name <laughs> to Charlie so in, I, I grew up with Charlie Chirelli here. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm in Hamilton, Ontario, where I grew up. Yes. Uh, and so, so Charlie is it, and it's uh, Charlie Chirelli or Calogero Chirelli or Hey You or Cha or. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I have to mention too, he's an international actor, and uh, yes, he's in. We're talking to him. We went. To, we're going to Canada today. Wow, I love Hamilton, Ontario. I've been there. Lots of Italians there, yeah. right? Oops. Yes. Yes. Well, here, here's, here's something for you, Maria. There are 38,000 people from my hometown, Racalmuto, in uh-huh. Sicily, in Hamilton, and there are only 10,000 in Racalmuto. Oh, my goodness. The whole town has poured into the city. Oh, my gosh. It's the same thing. I know my family's from Abruzzo, and there are a couple of towns that they have their feast days in, like, right outside of Toronto, because there are so many that have come there, you know, from from Italy. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But um, Charlie's going to talk to us today, especially about many things, but the film that he's in, The Road to the Lemon Grove, if you haven't seen it yet, when was it? It was just released, right? When was it released? Uh uh, it, it was just released on streaming platforms or uh, whatever, you know, Amazon, etc. Yes, on yes. July, July 7th. However, okay. we did have a national run, uh, a theatrical run before COVID that was very successful, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so this is a, basically a re-release for the streaming platform. There's a DVD. Yes. And, and allow me to put a plug in for this DVD. Do, do you mind? Yes, def- no, no, I want you to. In this DVD, there are, of course, well, not of course, there are outtakes. Now, uh-huh. there's outtakes and then there's outtakes. Yes. When you're working with Italians, there's zany outtakes, yes. right? Yes. But there's also uh, Dale Hildebrand, the wonderful director and producer with whom I had worked or with uh, for this whole thing. He and I did a, a commentary. And uh-huh. it's, it's, a, it's we, we watched the movie. Uh-huh. Without stopping, it's kind of like the people watching the Santa Claus parade and giving a commentary of the Santa Claus parade as it goes oh, by. Oh, yes, yes. As the movie floats by us. Uh, uh, remember that I'm an actor that has four parts, two lead parts and hey, two yes. supporting parts in the movie. Yes. yes. So, so, Eddie Murphy, eat your hat. Yes. You're, you're not the only one. Anyway, the point being, the commentary uh-huh. is wonderful. Uh, and there are Italian, if you want to do the Italian subtitles, yes. they're wonderful. We poured over those subtitles with real experts. So anyway. Oh, that's great. That's good. So tell me, where did you film? Where did you uh, get to film at? Did you film in Italy or was My, it? Well, oh, 
Oh, <laughs> where are you going to do an Italian film? There's only two, three places you could do it. Philadelphia, yes. Hamilton, <laughs> and Italy. Exactly. Well, we did it in Sicily, actually. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes. Uh, Syracuse, to be uh, the Syracuse area. Syracuse, yes. Oh, my gosh. The island of Ortigia, and, of course, the Greek amphitheater, the uh, the Orecchio di Dionysi, the, the, the ear of Dionysus. Yes, I knew Syracuse well because I went there 40 years ago as a hippie, uh, returning to my island after having been born there and been about eight months old when we came to America. Uh -huh. And remember that it's always America. It doesn't matter. Probably in South America, they say America as well. Right. My mother wouldn't, wouldn't say, Manaja Canada. Mm -hmm. She'd never say that. She'd say, Manaja America. Yeah. Oh, that's what my grandfather used to say. And he was from Abruzzo. So I guess they all say that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've been to Abruzzo. I've heard them say that in Abruzzo. Yes. Anyway, so we filmed, we filmed in the, the Syracuse area because I knew of its beauty. The other thought was Racalmuto, the town I just told you about that yes. has so many people in Hamilton. Uh -huh. However, number one, um, well, you know, I have lots of relatives in Racalmuto, and uh -huh. they're alive and well and lovely. But if I say the wrong thing, uh, in Racalmuto, about Racalmuto, we thought that we'd go neutral. We uh -huh. made up a town called uh -huh. Terra Mare. That's good, yes. And as you know, Terra Mare means land and sea. Not, uh, yes. not everybody knows that. but yes. um, And so we, had, we actually had a, a, a sign for the street that really fooled some of the locals because we put up a real sign. Oh you, know how movie, you know how movie, so they're driving, going into Syracuse and going, where the hell am I? Get what is this? Uh, so, because if you make up uh, a, a town, yes, you can go to any town you want yes. around the area. So there must have been about twenty towns that we went into. Not to mention Toronto, uh -huh. um, Hollywood North, uh, a yes. little bit of Hamilton. Uh, yes. So, but but the Syracuse area is a good frame of reference about where we were, and most uh -huh. of it was on location. Oh, wow. That's great. Oh, you poor thing. So you had to be in Italy to film this film. Oh, my goodness. What a heartache. <laughs> I, yes, I know what you mean about uh, your family and mentioning the town because, you know, I, I lived in Abruzzo for many years. The family, part of my heritage is from Molise. Uh -huh. But I never really talk about Molise a lot because I never spent a lot of time there. Oh, my gosh. So when I do events and if I only speak about Abruzzo and I have my family that, that are from Elise here, oh gosh, I never hear the end of it. So that was a good idea to make up the name of the town. So, you know. <laughs> and I think they've forgiven me because I returned to the town and the whole town, uh, the band came out, the, everybody, all the artisans came out. They must have forgiven me because they're treating me <laughs> Uh, they're treating me as if the movie was made in 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 Rakamuto. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because when when you open la uca mia per parlare, this this uh, that it's a language, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sicilian's a language, and within Sicilian there are many Sicilian dialects. Yes. They yeah. know that I'm their boy. Quando you parlo così, chi ti sanno che io sono di dra. So um, I am the embodiment of Rakamuto. Yes. But it was filmed in the Syracuse area. And, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's great. So tell us the premise, the, you know, a quick synopsis of the story so, you know, we can get people to, to watch it. It has a, such an interesting storyline. Can you tell us without giving too much away? Allora, uh, it's, it's about an old country uh, Sicilian papa who uh -huh. died. Who uh -huh. died. And yeah. of course... He wants to go to Paradiso. Yes. And, and so he actually makes it to the gates of Paradiso. But uh -huh. there are unresolved matters in the family, especially with respect to his son, whose name is Calogero, my, my namesake. Yes. The papa's name is Antonio. Uh -huh. And pointed out to him that there are feuds to resolve. There's uh -huh. a will. And in the will, there's a lemon grove in Sicilia. Now, a lemon grove means nothing because they're being abandoned but right. the Lemon Grove has a Madonna that performs miracle. Uh -huh. And one side of the family wants to exploit this into a theme park where people have to, which is, which is I think it's uh, La Dolce Vita, one of the, one of the Marcello Mastriani movies. Yes, one of, yes. 
we hearken upon a lot of movies in this one here. Or the Fellini, F Fellini, Federico Fellini, something to do with Fellini. Yes, yes. We hearken upon Fel well, Fellini and Marcello, of course. Marcello, worked yeah, they work together. Yes. Um, so, so that particular theme. So we had to, you know, we had to put a Madonna in it. Otherwise, what the hell are they arguing about? Exactly. Like, oh, yes. Who cares? <laughs> who gives a damn? So, uh, so, he, so he has to resolve this matter, and the person through whom he had to resolve it was his son Calogero. And his son is a university professor of linguistics. Uh -huh. Because he's a professor of linguistics, and I play the son and the father. So yes. because he's a professor of linguistics, we get to use, or if you like the word exploit or uh, sfruttare, the whole language aspect. Some that I've just mentioned to you with respect yes. to the dialect, what is the language, the yes. evolution of language, the, uh, the devolution of language, uh -huh. the, 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 the decadence of language. Like my language... Raccalmutese doesn't uh -huh. exist in Raccalmuto. It pretty much only exists in Hamilton. Because, <laughs> yes. Because, and that's true for Molizani and all it, over. The it is, yes, I can attest to that too, yes. Italianization of the country post war and, yes. and has people like you and me, mass yes. media, bringing yes. Italian to them. So, so there's so much. And then there's the dichotomy between the two individuals. One is an es esteemed university professor of, of Sicilian history and language. Uh -huh. And the other is the, the, Ill the illiterate papa who is dead, but it's a spirit coming to haunt his son about what has to be done to, to rectify matters in the family. And the son doesn't give Un cavolo. He doesn't care because he's a university uh -huh. professor and he thinks his father is a man of, of the earth and he's a man of the, of, of the blackboard of, 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 as a university professor. So you have this dichotomy, this clash that continues between them. Yes. And, and the final uh, manifest, not final, but uh, this is what goes from, from act one to act two. Yes. Papa wants his ashes in Sicily. The ghost is, is uh, but we, we don't make it seem like, you know, go booga, booga, ghost. You yeah. see Antonio in the flesh. Uh-huh. He's dead, but you know how, if you. Yes, yes. And, and he wants his ashes back home and said, well, the family will lose it if we cremate you because eventually he haunts him to the point by coming to his lecture hall uh -huh. as a ghost. And, and, and mocking the crap out of him while the students don't hear it until he's fighting a ghost in front of the students. Oh and my goodness. He lost it according to the students, of course. And at that point, he has no choice. He goes, What? I, this is crazy. I've got to bring the ashes back. And then a breath of fresh air because he's going back to a home he didn't really know because he was under, he, like me, was under a year old when he, they emigrated. Oh, okay. As much as his head is full of all the facts of the philosophers that were the Greek philosophers based in uh -huh. Sicily, of which there were many, many. Yes. All, all those facts about language and dialect. Now he's going to where all that information is held. His oh, whole yeah. island of Sicily with his father's ashes under his arm. So the story evolves as to what, not only, not only do we deal with what happens when you immigrate, Yes. But now that us Italiani are in positions of going back yes. as, as people who have been actualized in professions, et cetera, et cetera what happens when you go back? Like, yes. for instance, that they don't speak the language. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, discovering about the two families who are feuding. And then, of course, there's the matter of the lemon grove. Yes, yeah. yes. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that gives you a, a long story of what it's about. Yes, I think that's definitely enough to get, you know, that that definitely got my interest up. I would love to. I'm going to definitely get that, get to see that this week. I didn't get a chance to, but I will definitely get to see that. So share with us. I know I had asked you if you wanted to share a recipe. You know, as Italians, we just grow up with food and cooking in the kitchen all the time. Go ahead. I had to close the door. Oh, so I was going to say, I know, you know, I was asking you if you have a recipe or something, but, you know, Italians, I know you were remarking that we don't do formal recipes. Our mothers did and our grandmothers did. And it's just right. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, you know, they knew how to do it. So can you share? I know you were going to share with us some some things about your your mother and the garden and things you were going to give us some uh, 
some things well, on that? Let me, why don't I just start with uh, something? Uh, it's rather elementary for those of us that grew up with fig trees. Oh, in yeah. the We're talking Canada here, okay? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so, so right away, uh, mm -hmm. there's a food stuff that you would never anticipate. Now, uh, the reason I don't go recipes is because my mother's recipe is you, when, when it's summer, when it's harvest time for the, yeah. for the yeah. massive amounts of foods that are grown in the garden, yes. uh, they look around and there's your recipe. Oh, Zarki, oh yeah, but I'll do the fig tree story because that's a classic. Yes. Okay. No one would ever think it. But my father and, and others from the neighborhood, remember, you know, the t Italians cluster around neighborhoods. Yes, yes. And in Hamilton, they're from the same town, not only the yes. same. They, they brought uh, branches that they kept alive that were rooted in water when they got here. Oh, my um, gosh. From, from Sicily. Yes. And so did my father. That, uh -huh. that little thing grew in the basement because the, the basement in the early days was in a rec room. And it's, right, right. <laughs> It was a second kitchen, even yes. at the dirt floor. Yes. So it would grow in, in, the, in a hole in the basement yes. till it got a particular size. Yes. Uh, always outside in the, in, the, in the summer or spring. Yes, yes. And, and then it got to be about 10 feet tall. Now, th think, of, think of a basketball player. They aren't 10 feet tall. This is no. three feet taller than, the, than a seven-foot basketball. It gets... Well, the way you preserve it at that point uh -huh. is you pick a hole alongside of the tree that's right. 10 feet and more. Yes. And then you loosen the roots, uh -huh. not cut the roots. Some might have, and then you bend the tree into the hole like a grave. Oh my gosh, I never heard this. Wow. And then you put some boards on it so yes. that the branches don't connect with the dirt all the time. Yes. Uh, you know, they don't have rot. And then you put the dirt back on it and a mound in the backyard that we called the fig, fig tree grave that we hid behind for snowball fights would ensue. And, and in the, so in the, the spring, spring, go ahead. Yes. Dig it up, you dig it up and you set it up straight. And of course it doesn't, and, and it's still growing the damn yes. thing. Oh my gosh. And the most delicious purple figs ensued. Oh from, my from gosh. Factory, and we would use it for different things, including cooking, yes. but also for yes. peeling. So, yes, so and just eating. <laughs> we were eating fresh figs. That's one small thing. That is a, that's an example of uh -huh. our, our attempts to grow watermelon. So when my mother cooked, uh -huh. she went to the garden and got stuff. Now, when it was winter, she went to the market, you know, and of course, yes, yes. she couldn't speak English. So she, she said, oh, give me this, uh, this, uh, this, <laughs> when she cooked it, so we go to this. She used the word apitanza in the summer. This was, you were asking about a recipe. Well, the recipe was go to the garden, get some of the most, uh, you know, fabulous vegetables. And remember that Italian, uh, Sicilians, unlike some parts of Italy, do not cook picante. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, everything it has a lovely spice to it, but yes. not like, excuse me, I love the uh, calabrese. Most of my friends are calabrese, but not like the calabrese no, that I love. I happen to like picante, so I love eating mm -hmm. with my calabrese friends. But <laughs> my mom would make a pot uh -huh. and, and put all kinds of vegetables in the pot and the smell that ensued from a big cauldron oh, of a yes. pot. Yeah. Because she had six kids, don't you know? Oh, my gosh. So she had to feed them. And uh, we were poor, as everybody can attest, when they're Im immigrants. Right. So, that, so the recipe was go out to the garden smell, see what's ripe and put it in the pot and cook it. But she also made her own cannoli. I remember she was, uh, it was always, uh, I was the one that had to get the old broomstick and saw the broom handle off and uh -huh. then saw it off into little bits so she can wrap. Oh my gosh, uh, the, 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 pasta, the cannoli the pasta, right. So these are little kind of, I, I'm not a cook, but I've been privy to the, some of the best cooks in the world, I'll tell you. I'm, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure you are. And it's, isn't it amazing the way they, they did things? They're just, better than professional chefs and the amazing things that they did, especially being poor. And they just knew, you know, how to make the most wonderful food and things like that. It's just unbelievable, you know, amazing. But I was, re I was really amazement with the fig tree story because I actually, I, I had to, my mom grew up in an Italian neighborhood in Philadelphia and her father was from from Molise, and he always had a fig tree, and she always used to talk about climbing the tree and eating them for the summer. Yeah, so I wanted to get her that. Well, Philadelphia is a little further south. You might have gotten yes. a big, 
a bigger uh, for climbing. Yeah. But the, intro, the, the, the story of introducing Americani uh -huh. who are not Italiani to figs that have never eaten figs yes. and then telling them that you got them from your backyard when I was in university and they're going, what are these? I roll them over. <laughs> yes, I hear that. <laughs> well, what, what are these things? Because they only can relate to dry figs, not fresh yes. figs. They and not fresh figs, non-imported <laughs> fresh figs. Yes, from yes. From Philadelphia, from wherever. Now, not everybody buried the fig trees, I just want you to know. Yes, Even yes. Even our neighborhood in Philadelphia, some put greenhouses around it. Yes, that's right. But that's after a while, you couldn't take it in after a while. But mostly yes. you took it in and out until it's a particular size. Until, yes, yes. And yeah, you freak out the, the, uh, the Vero Americani about... These are friends. Well, you, you don't freak them out so much because they don't even know what, what the hell it is. When they they are. I know I've had I've actually introduced a few people because now I, I started one fig tree and now I have a few and I've learned. Yeah, we, we are our winners aren't as brutal as they are in Canada. So we have like I, I have like greenhouses around, but I have about four or five fig trees now. And uh, oh, they're My just God. oh, they're just I love I just love fresh figs. There's nothing better. Or it just it reminds me of being in Italy in the summertime, you it know. All the, oh gosh, so um, so we have them too. But that's a that's a beautiful story about your mom. So any new anything coming up? Um, where can people find you? Or do you have anything coming up? Or I guess you're just promoting this film right now, right? Because it just came I, out. I, I'm never only just anything uh, yes. because I, I am a professional harmonica player and I'm also uh, a theater performer. And That's I right. You do inter you're inter yes, you perform internationally. So, so any projects so, coming up? Well, I've just completed a theatrical pro project for the Fringe Festival in Hamilton, which was beautiful. And it's not Italian-esque. Yes. It's, it's 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 American because it starts in Baltimore and ends up in Saskatchewan. Oh my uh, goodness! Prairies, and that was uh, uh, that's called Prairie Odyssey, and yes. it, it stopped running yet uh, two days ago. So there was uh -huh. that. Uh, there's always something coming up. I was just at a jam sure. session, uh, a musical jam session. I, I I play the blues, blues. I guess the blues, blues. Uh, you you take a harmonica like <laughs> this, and you go. But I want to get back to food. Yes. The, the movie is also all about food. All ah. about food. Matter of fact, Dale Hildebrand started his idea of the script with yes. thinking about what, how lovely it would be to have a long table and a beautiful piazza. And of course, then you got to think of themes, why are you know, yes, et cetera. Yes. And, and to the point when we had our release, our national theatrical release, restaurants were copying the recipes of the foods that were in the movie so oh, wow the movie has become iconic life. yes as, yes when you watch it your eyes will tell you uh about the foods uh, Izarki yes and rapini and josie uh -huh. cannoli and you'll see the italian food uh, and also food was the way that the two families were brought to the table for food. They're, they're feuding families. Yes. So the ghost says to his son, got to bring, get the families together. Uh -huh. And so the son says, well, I've got, remember that his love interest is his beautiful uh, model actress named Maria. And she is the prima ba ballerina of Italy. Oh she my is. goodness. Ah. She is? Wow. We had to put her in a holding tank. She was, wherever we went, she was followed for autographs. Oh so, my goodness. Uh, and that was Rosella Brescia. And she's like, I remember that we have Americano, uh, uh, we have Burt Young from uh -huh. Rocky Two and oh Three. Oh my and goodness, Mookie. I didn't realize that. Oh wow. Brilliant. He plays uh, He plays an uncle, whereas uh -huh. I play a papa, he plays an uncle. But my yes. papa, six hours of makeup before oh. for the other role. Okay. Oh wow. Nick Mancuso has made 300. Hollywood. Yes, Nick Mancuso, I do know of. Yes. He's, oh, wow. He, he lived next door to Michael Douglas. He's our other Hollywood person. So we have, and and then uh, a young 10-year-old at the time, who was now yes. like 16. Yes. I had to teach him Sicilian because he plays the son. Uh-huh. He had to learn Sicilian. And we have some really touching parts uh, that, that denote poverty, but we yes. also have touching parts that denote the success uh -huh. by virtue of Calogero being a university professor alone. Oh, yes. 
of the success. So wow. we we got, we're we're chock full of uh, great actors. Yes. Uh, and and I don't mind saying it, it was my first film. Oh wow, wow! But you're you know you have a lot of experience in theater as an actor, so that's well, the, definitely you bring that to the to film. So Charlie, before we run out of time, I usually ask some of my guests um, what this question. Maybe you can you can tell me, and I usually like to share this with my audience. What does food mean to you? If we asked you that, what does food mean to you? It, it is the center of being. Um, this is not an exaggeration. This is, I'm not speaking as a stereotype Italian. Yes. I, I'm speaking food is life. You know, I, I mean, there are other beautiful things to dance is to live, but to eat is to live. Um, you, you're not, and, and what people who aren't Italian have to know is we're, we're not immersing ourselves into our culture, that our culture brings forth food like a volcano that, that erupts. It, 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 it really... It, now, we're not always conscious of it, uh, those of us that aren't like our parents and grandparents, but, but we're always aware. So I'll make a, a distinction between awareness and consciousness. I grew up in a family that was conscious of it. Uh -huh. uh, as somebody that became an Americano, I'm always aware of it. But, and it only takes, you know, you, say, you just say the word uh, Sidney Tucci, and I go, food. Uh, yes. say, uh, Anthony Bourdain, and I go, food. Yeah, uh, Maria, food, <laughs> you know, you, um, uh, food is, is, is kind of like the fulcrum, the center of being, uh, the, the way to be, if you understand food, then you understand life, because it's yeah. all about ingredients, it's all about the right ingredients, and food is how you sustain life, I mean, forget the embellishments of food, you know, yes. when you're poor, bread and a wonderful cheese and some salami the way our, our my father ate and a and a thing of sardines you want to know about food you don't have to even, even turn the damn stove on exactly so a nice great tin of sardines and you just sit there and you contemplate and you eat uh exactly. it, really it means everything to me thank you for that so charlie where can we find you if anybody else wants to find out about you do you have a website or you actually uh, the spelling of my name is always tricky, yes. but Charlie, uh, uh, keep in mind that I'm the only Charlie uh, Chirelli in the world because right. there are a lot of Calogero Chirellis yes. in my town. There's like tons of them, but there's only, so Charlie is spelled C-H-A-R-L-Y, no I-E, right. no E-Y. Right. I reserve, right. and, and, and Chirelli, well, I, you have to put it on the screen or something, but yes. uh, you can find that. But the thing to, to find, because yes. the movie is hot to trot, yes. is Road, Road to Road. the Lemon Grove. Yes. If you Google Road to the Lemon Grove, chase it around until you get to Amazon where you can order the movie. There are a lot of sites where you can order the movie yes. uh, streaming, or you can order the DVD, which is recommendable too, because it is a glorious piece for your library. It's gonna be up there with Cinema Paradiso. Uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful life. You'll see when you watch it. Yes. I, I guarantee you that, and I'm not speaking through my head and my perspective, uh -huh. but those that have seen it have come back to me. And I'm just, I'm almost embarrassed of, about how much they love it. Well, I've, so, heard, I've heard some amazing things about the film and we're going to put it up on my website and social please. media. We're sharing this interview on a lot of places too. So uh, we'll definitely share a lot about the film and links to the film also. Well, thank you, Charlie, so much and much success to you. And I'm sure I'm going to have you on again because you're always doing amazing things. So I'm sure we're gonna talk to you again and uh, much success with this film also. Maria, much success to you, first Thank of all, you. from evolving from, from being a model to this. Well, it's all about beauty and food is beautiful and you are beautiful. I'll be very glad to come back to your show. Oh, definitely. Thanks so much, Charlie. Have a great Buon fede gusto. Ah, veramente. Buon fede gusto anche a lei. Sì, grazie, grazie. August 15, fede gusto. And love to all the listeners. Road to the Lemon Grove. Yes, the road to the Lemon Grove. Thanks again, Charlie. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And as always, thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's guest, Charlie Chiarelli from the road to the lemon grove and you can find the book 
that my recipe for the lemon torta is from. It's my latest book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Diaries, Seasons. You can find that book on Amazon, on Kindle, at artoflivingprimamedia.com, at marialiberati.com, and really anywhere books are sold. And also, I wanted to make mention of a special book I had the honor of doing the English translation of. I actually translated an uh, Italian, it's actually an award-winning book in Italy, and it's titled in English. It's by award-winning journalist Laura Donadani, who's known as the Italian Wine Girl. And uh, the English translation that I did is called How Wine Can Change Lives, Seven Stories of Courage and Rebirth. That's seven Italian wine stories of courage and rebirth. And it's a really interesting book. It's a different type of a book, really interesting. And if you like reading about the small, little family wineries in Italy, you will really enjoy this book. That's really a little bit about what it's about. Again, How Wine Can Change Lives, Seven Italian Wine Stories of Courage and Rebirth. The author is award-winning Italian journalist Laura Donadani, and I did the translation, so you'll find my name as the English translator. And as always, you can find me on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati. You can also find me on Instagram at Maria Liberati on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on LinkedIn at M Liberati, and on Pinterest as Maria Liberati, on my Vimeo channel, that's Maria Liberati, uh, my Roku channel is The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati, and my YouTube channel, The Maria Liberati Channel. And as always, if you get to recreate that recipe from this week the summer lemon torta please take a picture share it hashtag it the maria liberati show and we'll share it also on the website for this podcast the maria liberati show.com and until next week peace love and pasta